Hello, Monroe School District, and welcome to Taking the Fur Out of Canvas, Part 5. So, um, today I wanted to chat with you a little bit more about Canvas and the big forest picture and what that kind of looks like. Yesterday, we talked about some options for your classes in Canvas, and that had to do with using templates and talking about whether you wanted to be able to share with a grade level team or a district level team, if you wanted a blueprint course, all of that kind of thing. Um, this is not something that's mandatory, so if that left you confused, please don't worry. You don't have to do any of that. Um, you can just set up your class. But I did want to put those options out there because um, those are some important details for people who have more specific needs. Um, I do want to share with you another of those more specific needs. So if this, if you don't fit into this category, you can just pick up a cup of coffee and just disregard for just a minute. Um, if you are a secondary teacher and you teach the same, like let's say Washington State history and you teach five sections of Washington State history, everything is exactly the same from class to class to class. And you would love to be able to just have one class and then be able to have that content go to all five of your classes. A blueprint class is probably not your best option because a blueprint course has to go through someone in the admin um, level, such as Nile or myself, and we have to push the content out to you once it's created. Um, and so if you want to be more in control of that, um, there, there is a feature out there. And let me also say, if you are an elementary teacher and you're a specialist and you have like, um, say PE or music and you see all the students in your whole school, it's possible that you would want to, to have all of your fifth grade classes be built together so that you just have to build it in one class and it pushes it out to all the other classes. So there is a feature in Canvas that will enable this and that is called cross listing your courses. And essentially what you do is you build in one of your courses and then you cross list the other courses underneath it. So all the other courses automatically get the same information as that number one course. Um, a word of caution on this is that you can't change anything individually in any of those other classes. And so if you have a class that falls behind, you can't go in and just adjust that one class. All of them work together. Um, a real positive about this, though, let's say you have 150 students who all potentially have the same content. When it comes time to grading, you just literally pick an assignment and you grade all 150 of those students at the same time. But the grades through Canvas get pushed into each of those individual sections. And when you push it out to Skyward, it gets pushed into the right course in Skyward as well. So it really is a great feature. So I wanted to bring that, that to your attention as well. That is called cross-listing. It's really easy to set up. Tomorrow, I will put a link with some instructions on how to set that up. If you're interested in that, um, pick one of your classes and start putting the content in that particular class. And then when we cross-list it, everything will flow through that one class. Okay, so I wanted to share that option with you. There's also another option that I want to bring to your attention, and thank you, Susie Swan, again. So she was looking, and in January, Canvas released a brand new tool called Direct Share, and this is a way for you to be able to take an assignment and to be able to share it to multiple courses at one time um, through the course you're in. And so, and that's huge. That's what we've been asking for. And so in January, Canvas released that. Um, tomorrow, I will give you some more instructions on how to um, implement that as well. So I, I need to get it set up um, in the admin console first. So that is coming. So some great brand new tools always being released, um, but wanted to share those options with you. So um, that may not pertain to everybody. So if that doesn't pertain to you, ignore that. I don't want to, to be giving you more information than you need to hear right now. Okay, so um, yesterday we talked about templates and I told you that today we were going to bring a template into your course so that you have a guide for setting up things and that's gonna make it a whole lot easier for you. I want to show you how to do that today. So today we're, I'm gonna bring your attention um, back to your global navigation bar. That's the, that's the main one for your course on the left-hand side. And as you scroll down near the bottom, you're gonna see a tool called the Commons. And this is, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, let it be going there while we're talking. This is um, a really great resource 
And this is a resource we can use within our school district, but it's also a resource that we can use out in the greater public. So when you go out to the Canvas Commons, this is what it's going to look like. And through here, you are gonna see content that other people have shared to be able to be used with anybody who wants to use it. Um, and so for example, uh, here is a chemistry scavenger hunt, grade levels 10 to 12, um, that you're, you're welcome to this content. So anything in the comments people have put out there and copyrighted it as public. And so um, if you're looking for specific lesson plans, if you're looking for quizzes, if you're just looking for ideas, if you're looking for assignments, um, you can scroll through here and there, there is, if you notice at the top, I'm going to try not to make you all crazy by scrolling too fast. Um, back at the top, you'll see there are right now almost 100,000 resources out there. Um, way too much to go through, right? So you can come in here and you can search and you'll notice that there's a lot of different ways that you can search. So people tag things and that might be tagged by grade level. So for example, if you're looking for things in kindergarten, um, if you go ahead and type in K, oftentimes that will bring up a kindergarten lesson. It may bring up other things you'll notice here too, but here's like K for kindergarten. All grades is gonna pull up a kindergarten. Um, here's an addition to five quiz for kindergarten. Here's a life cycle of a chick. Um, and so, so different things that different ways you can search, you can search by topic. So if you're interested in looking up something for, um, Washington state history, and let's see what lesson plans other people have created out there, you can come out here and now you can see different things. And when you're looking important to note that at the top, it is going to tell you what type of information that this is. So in this case, this is an entire course that has been created. Um, that would be fantastic, right? So um, here's another course, another course. Here's just a module. So um, when you're looking at the big picture in Canvas, you're going to see a course, which means everything has been built, like the Digitools class I showed you yesterday. That course is built. And teachers just go in and they assign assignments to students as they come up. Um, a module is the next kind of layer. So you have a course, a full course, but then oftentimes people will break that down into modules, which are like units or chapters that fall within that course. So it's, it's a little piece. And then within the module, you're going to find such as this one, just specific individual assignments. Um, and those might be assignments, those might be discussions, those might be quizzes. And so really, if you kind of start looking at the hierarchy of the different pieces. So as you're looking through, um, here you're gonna find this is just a quiz. So if you are looking for a quiz on the Great Depression and World War II, um, you might take a look at this and see if that fits your need. Because if it does, it is super easy to implement, or to integrate that right directly into your content. So um, when, when we're looking at now, um, I think we're to a point where we're ready to start putting content into our classes. I wanted to bring this tool to your attention because it is super, it, it, it's, uh, I mean, the ability to be able to find things and to share things and not recreate the wheel, um, it, it's, it's really a big deal. You can check on most relevant and then if you want to filter, it also gives you the ability to filter. So if you're looking for um, stuff that was made just for third grade, you can click on that and that's gonna filter out down to third grade level. If you're looking for videos, um, assignments, anything, you can just click on these things and then it's going to filter it out based on how people have tagged that information when they import it out into the commons. Um, I am, I'm going to be working on setting up some specific um, groups within Commons for just our school district so that if you're a third grade team and you want to share it just within the Monroe School District, there I'm going to create a group so you can share it just within um, the district and then um, fellow third grade teammates can go out and find that information quickly right within the district. So um, that is coming. Okay, so that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and head back out to the dashboard. And I want to show you now how you can bring in that template course. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? 
I, I always forget to do this. I'm sorry. We're going to pause for a minute because I would like for you to head out to the comments and in that search bar, I would like for you just to type in something that has to do with your content area, just so you can see what gets pulled up and what you might have resources for. So spend five minutes and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and we'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, welcome back. I hope you found some, some things that looked like it might be user friendly for you in your class in the comments. Okay, um, now I'm going to show you how that we can, um, how we can bring something from the commons into your class. And we're going to do that through a template course. So let's go ahead and go to your sandbox course, because I want you to try this out first before you jump into one of the courses that has been created for you through Skyward. So um, you, yours would say whatever your name sandbox. I created mine as DN because I already had a DN sandbox. So I'm going to go out to this course. This is the, the sample one we've been working in. And so I'm going to show you how to do this so you can see what it looks like. And then once you feel comfortable, then you can do the same steps and you can import this template into your other classes. So um, I've gone ahead and opened up my class and notice over here on the sidebar, I have an option to import from the comments. So if you know what you're looking for, that's when you would use this tool. If you find something in the commons and you want to push it out to your class, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and go to import from commons. And this is going to bring me up to that main, um, that main page. I'm going to head over here to the filter. And once I'm in the filter, I am going to look, I'm going to scroll all the way down and you will notice we have the option for Monroe school district. So I'm going to go ahead and click that Monroe School District, and this is going to bring up content that is um, that has been created by Monroe School District. Now you can see we have people who have been sharing and, and putting stuff out here, which is so fantastic. So there's 512 pieces out here. So you can see that that there are quizzes, assignments. Um, there's a lot of math out here. Uh, you can see who has pushed this out to to Canvas Commons. So if you see something in here that you want to grab, it's they have put it out there and shared it with you, so you can go ahead and grab that. But um, what I want to draw your attention to right now is at the top of the page, you're going to see here are our templates. And so when things get put into the commons, they get put into the commons based on the newest. So I just put these in last night. The other way you could search is um, we have two templates, actually three templates for your consideration. One is a secondary template. One is an elementary and then another one is an elementary. So if you know you're a secondary, you can just type in secondary and it will bring up anything within the Monroe School District that has had a tag of secondary. So you can see here, here is the secondary course template that has been brought up. Um, same thing if you're an elementary. And I will tell you that if you're in middle school, um, actually probably starting four to eight, I would suggest looking at both the elementary course as well as the um, secondary because you may find one template you prefer over the other. So let's take a look at these. Um, Karen Hickenbottom over at Frank Wagner, she has created a template for her school. Um, if you wanna take a look at that, take a look at that. Um, this is the one that Nal and I created. So I'm gonna go ahead and this is what you're gonna do with anything you find in the comments. Go ahead and click on it. And this is going to give you a preview of what this looks like. So as you as you scroll down, you're gonna see, okay, here's some of the assignments, here's some of the features of it. It doesn't look anything like it's gonna look in your class. And so that's why I suggest using your sandbox and try this in your sandbox, see what it looks like, see if you like it, um, and then push it into your other class. So once I've opened it up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to import this and this is really important. I just want to tell you a terrible mistake I made once. And I accidentally clicked on this all box as well as the class I was hoping to put it into, or I, I don't know, I was in a hurry. And I imported this into all of my classes. And you can see I have a lot of them. And this, uh, this can't just be easily undone. So do be really careful here, <laughs> um, especially when you're doing like a template or if you're trying to import an entire class. Um, so just learn from me on that one. So I always really, really careful. Okay. So 
this is going to go into my DN course. So I'm going to click on that. Make sure nothing else is, is selected. And uh, then I'm going to scroll to the bottom and then import into this course. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Once you have done that, you're going to see a green bar across the top. And that tells you that your import has started. It takes just a minute or two. It's pretty quick. If you're downloading an entire course, it might take just a little bit longer, but our template isn't very big. So I'm going to head back to my dashboard. And now when I click on my name, there's the template. And so now it has been imported into here. Yay, it's as easy as that. Like really, it's, it's so simple. Um, and so now this has become part of my course. Again, I'm just gonna remind you those three little lines right there. If you click on that, that's gonna make it, it's gonna take away the clutter. So it makes it a little easier for you to be able to see, but this is what the template looks like. And now it's in my sandbox. Um, I'm gonna show you also if, if you are, let's go ahead, I'm gonna head back to my dashboard and I'm gonna show you the secondary template. And this is a second walkthrough. So in case you forgot how to do this, um, run through again one more time. So this time, though, I'm going to start a new course because um, I want to look at what it looks like first. So this one I'm going to call this is my um, secondary test. And I'm going to create this course. OK, this is either one that you've already created or you can create a new one as well. And now I want to import from the commons. It's right there on that home page. Once I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and filter. And I'm looking for Monroe School District. If I don't quickly see what I'm looking for, I can type in a word that's going to help me find that. I do see it right here. Here's my secondary template. So I'm going to click on that so I can preview it. And as I preview it, I can see that this looks like the content that I was looking for. Um, I can also go through, if you're interested, you can click in here and you can find all, all the different pieces and you can look at it. So if you're interested in going a little bit deeper, but I will tell you, it, it does still look different when you push it into your class. So um, if you're doing more than just a, a upload a, of a single lesson or a single quiz, I would strongly suggest that you create a class really quickly, import it in, see what it looks like, make sure it's what you're looking for, and then um, push it into your regular class. So now I'm going to scroll down because I'm looking for, I just created this secondary test class. I'm going to click on that. Scroll on down and then I'm going to import this. It takes just a moment to do so. If I scroll up to the top, the green bar means that I have successfully started that import. I'm going to head back to my dashboard. And as I scroll down, I'm going to find here's the secondary class that I created. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And voila, look at that. There's a template and I just literally created this class. You saw me create it. And now I have a template that is set up ready for me to, to put my personal information in here and ready to start loading up assignments. So it's, it's really that simple. All right, so what I would like for you to do right now is to go ahead and um, open up your sandbox course. And then I want you to go to the import from commons button head out to Commons, and I want you to import one of those um, template courses, take a look at it and see if you like it. And if you like it, then you can import it into one of your regular classes that has students in it um, because we're ready to start loading content. So um, take this will probably take you maybe 10 minutes or so. So I'm going to go ahead and pause while you um, go out and practice importing your template into your sandbox course. And then if you want to push that into your regular classes as well. All right. See you soon. Welcome back. I hope you were successful in importing that template into your courses. Um, right now, we're going to head out to our sandbox course because when you're first learning, I strongly suggest that you practice things in your sandbox course first before you um, put it into your regular class. Once you start becoming comfortable, start jumping into your regular class and go. But initially, it makes you feel more comfortable that, you know, if I make a mistake or whatever, not a big deal because I'm the only one who's going to see this. So I'm going to head out to my sandbox course. 
And right now we're going to learn how to edit the content that has been pushed out to you. So you'll notice that the title of my course has now appeared in the title of the, the template, but there's still a lot of stuff in here. I'm not Mrs. Mack and I really don't want my students to see that. Um, and I don't really care about cheesecake lollipop gummies. So I want to start changing this content and making it my own. Now that it's in my class, even though I imported it from the commons, this is mine. And what I do in here is going to reflect only in this class. So let's go ahead and at the top, we're going to click the edit button. And this is going to edit our home page. Now, notice when you're looking at it, you have just a small little banner here and you aren't seeing everything. You'll see the little toggle bar at the side so you can scroll down and you can see the whole home page right here. Um, that isn't very big for me and that's going to be hard for me to work with. So you will see there's this grid of dots over here. And when I run my cursor over it, I get a double arrow. This is going to allow me to make that box, that editing box, a little bit bigger. So I can readjust that size however I want. And you can pull it down so you can see the whole page if you would like. It is a little easier because the rich content editor bar stays at the top. It is a little easier to work in the smaller space rather than try and do the whole page where you're having to continually go back to the top and back to the top. Okay, so now that I'm in here, I can start doing my edits. So notice my cursors here. I can come in. I can retype this information in. If I want to change this banner, I can go find another picture myself. Um, when I click on this, notice that if the um, once it's highlighted with a blue square around it, it brings up some option bars for me. And so if I want to put some text in here, if I want to do some changes, it doesn't give you a lot of options on this one, but you could do some changes. Once it's highlighted, if I just click the delete button, I'm not going to do that right now, but either the backspace or the delete button, it's just going to delete that image completely. Um, if you want to have that done, if I want to put a picture in here um, and add something else. I can just click right here and you know how to, we've talked about how to upload images and how to add different images. I could add a picture of myself. If I have a picture of myself, um, I could add that in here as a welcome to my students. Um, whatever you want, you can start customizing this, this page now. Um, again, I can click anywhere in here and now I can start making changes to the text. And so, um, so this is this is really easy to edit just by clicking the edit button. Again, this is the same information that that the same toolbar that we used with the announcements that we use with creating assignments. It's the rich content editor that goes with everything. The three little dots. In case you don't have all of the icons up here, click on those three little dots, and it will bring up the rest of them. So again, we have our power plug. And in here, if you wanted to add a video, maybe you did a video about yourself or, hey, welcome to our class, and you want your students to see that video, you can add that in. So, um, but again, this is the landing page right now. So when your students go to open up the class, this is the page they're going to see. So think about what is it I want my students to see initially when they jump in here. Now, let's scroll down just a little bit. And this is... Um, now, this is more of the elementary middle school template. If at a high school um, or secondary, if you want to do something like this, you can also do something like this. Um, if you click on any of these objects, I'm not going to now because I'm in edit mode, but if you were to click on this, this box is linked to an assignment right now. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to link um, different pieces within your content to assignments, to quizzes, things like that. So um, if you want your homepage to be the landing spot and students just click on an icon, um, and Mondays, all Mondays work is listed right here, this is a probably a really good template to use. You can change these um, icons. So I'm gonna show you that as well. Let me, I'm actually gonna go down here because that one is linked. If I delete that, it's gone. I have icons down here at the bottom. You're welcome to use any of these icons. So if I click on this one and I use Control C, I can copy it, click and put the drop this one back here, Control V, and I can drop it right in there. 
if you want to make these pictures feel a little bit more um, like students at a secondary level, or if you're in kindergarten and you feel like you would like to have some icons that are a little bit um, more geared toward a kindergartner, so maybe it's a, a instead of a calculator, you have a plus minus sign, something like that in here. Go ahead and click um, in the box that you want the image to be in. And then let's go back up to that rich content editor and let's head over to images. And again, you have your options here. I'm going to do upload image. Course images are images that are attached already to this course. There's not going to be very many of them. Um, and then your user images are like the picture you added of yourself, whatever. So I'm going to go to upload image. And again, this brings up the option for me if I want to upload something from a computer. If I've gone out online and found a picture, let's, in fact, let's do that for a quick minute. Um, I'm going to head out to, you might want to have an iReady image. So let's go out here to images. And here I have an iReady image. Um, again, you're going to want to be really careful to make sure of copyright. Let me just show you that really quick. If you click on tools, usage rights, make sure that you have um, labeled for either for reuse. We are non-commercial, so we can click on labeled for non-commercial reuse. Um, it, it does limit your options a little bit more, so um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the right one. I'm gonna head back up here just for the time being. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And once I, That wasn't a very good one to click on. Anyway, um, if I right click on the image, I can copy the image address. So I'm gonna copy that image address. Let's head back out here to my Canvas page. And now in the URL, I'm going to paste this image. And then I'm gonna submit it down here at my submit button. And let's, Go down here and voila, there's your iReady image. So um, I'm glad that worked. I didn't test that ahead of time. <laughs> so that's how you would get a URL image right there if you wanted to. And then um, and then again, remember you have the other images um, that are available to you that are built right into Canvas. So um, that would be if you go out to upload image and then you have Unsplash, you can type in whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for, you want a picture of just a school or um, Spanish or whatever it is that you're looking for. Let's see if they have anything. If you're looking for Spanish, you want to have a picture. Um, let's grab this one. And then that's going to put your image right in there. So, um, so this is a way that you could quick and easily readjust this template to meet your content area. So that is, if you're, um, if you're looking at this particular template, that's how you would go through and you would adjust the different pieces in here. Here's what I would like for you to do on this particular template if you're using this one, and then I'm gonna show you the secondary one as well. So part of your work for today is going to be to come into your template and start doing some work on it. If you start working on it, you feel pretty comfortable, I would head out to your class that has your students in it and I would do the work in there. Um, because you aren't going to want to make it perfect here and then go into there. We could share it into that class, and but I think it's easier if you just work directly into that class. Okay, so um, the images, you can play around with the images. You could readjust this. You can change this to not days of the... You, you can adjust this any way you want to. Um, again, notice we have the blue bar around around this um, this table. When I click on that table, it brings up some options for me. So I want to show you this too. So that if you want to have rows deleted, if you want to add rows, this happens from making sure you have the blue bar and then just clicking in there and it's going to bring up these options for you. So um, so these are how to kind of change around the table just a little bit if you want to change the table. Okay, so um, work on your front page today. Now let's go out, let's take a look at the secondary template real quick just to make sure Oh, and make sure you change your, you save your changes. I didn't do that because I, I was playing around with it, but make sure you save your changes always in Canvas. Okay, I'm going to head down to my secondary class. And here's the template for my secondary class. 
same thing. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. And once I'm in edit, you see here's your working space and it's kind of small. So I'm going to click on my grid bar. I'm going to drag that a little bit, make it a little bit bigger so that I have a little bit more space to work with. And then I can start changing things up. So same thing. I'm going to draw your attention really quick down to the bottom though. And these are different pieces that students can click on for different links. Again, you can change these images, you can add images, whatever you want to do. You have the ability now that you're in the editor to make it your own. And this only affects your particular class. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here because I want to show you real quick with this template um, a little difference um, from the other one. When I click, once, once I'm out of edit, um, and I click on this, this one says about yourself. If you want to have a box in here that says about yourself, if you click on that, this is going to take you out to a page that has already been pre-built for you. Again, you can click on your edit and you can come in and you can do the editing right here for this particular page. If you make changes, be sure you come down to the bottom and save. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. All right. And then, um, I'm going to head back home and there are several boxes down here of things that you can do to change this now. So the class overview, this would be a great place if you wanted to have a syllabus, great place to house your syllabus. Um, learning and this, this one is class research helpful links. So let's click on that one for a second. This one takes you out to here. So if you want a page where students can click on that picture, and be taken out here to resources or links that you have. You can again edit this page and students can come out here and here's helpful resources. So if you want them to know, um, I don't know, maybe maybe there's a calculator page that that you want them to use online. And so you could have online calculator here so that if they're looking for that calculator, they know come to the helpful links and there it is. So that's um, so that's already attached into this. Let me see here. I didn't do any changes, so I'm going to head home. So right now, this template is set up so that these four pages are linked to other pages that you can go in and you can just adjust them and change them. The learning modules, this is where the work for students is going to happen. And so for secondary students, I think they can they can handle being popped out to modules that have already been built um, for them and then they'll be able to work their way through this. This is different than the elementary where they click on the icon, it will take them directly to that assignment. And again, tomorrow we will talk about how you can link different pieces into your home page, but I wanted to show you what that looked like. So your assignment for today, I have two of them for you. The first one is that I want you to practice editing your home page and if you run into questions and you don't know how to do this, that, or the other, that's okay. Remember, Niall has live help sessions this afternoon, and we will go through some of these features again in a different class. So you can go through and start editing that. The other piece that I want you to do, this is for the STEM part of this class, is um, in your SMORE newsletter that's going to head out today, you're going to notice there's a link here that says STEM at Home with NASA, and these are K-12 plans. So when you click on that, that's going to take you out to NASA's homepage. And I, I want to tell you, if you're really looking for ways that you can incorporate STEM work into your lesson plans right now, both for your online content, but for students when they're at home, NASA has really been working on building up their lesson planning and different pieces such a rich site it is right now. But they have just recently put in now, um, because of our circumstances, NASA at home. And so when you click on this NASA at home, this is going to give you several different options for things that you might be able to include in your content. So take a look at this one, and this gives you options for, um, for students at home. If you go back to ebooks, um, podcasts. There's just a lot of really rich material in here. And then if you go into STEM engagement, 
This is going to bring up specific grade level activities. So in here, you're going to see um, NASA STEM at home for fifth to eighth graders. Scroll on down. And now you're going to see here's K4, here's 5.8, here's 9.12. And so these are things that are built specifically for students to do at home with items hopefully they have at home. So how can you include some of this content into your lesson plans right now? Um, I think about sometimes I get asked, well, you know, I teach ELA. How am I going to incorporate STEM into ELA? Um, how about students writing about a project that they're doing for science? How about students writing, um, they can create algorithms where they're writing step-by-step -step processes for building things. Um, so a lot of ways I think you can put this into literally any content area that you teach. So if you would take about 15 minutes to look at this particular NASA website and then think about how you could take some of this content and add it into your Canvas lesson plan. And then in our Google document that's going along with this class, if you would go out there and just write two to three sentences about um, maybe there's a lesson plan you found, or maybe you added some content already into your class that has to do with that NASA. So that's your, your STEM assignment for today. All right, so I've given you a lot. Um, and, and we still have a lot of work to do. So one last thought. Um, tomorrow is supposed to be our last class um, for this introductory session. I'm going to continue building these lessons because we still have a lot more information to get through. So tomorrow I'll give you an option for how to submit your work if you say, okay, I want my seven STEM hours and I'm done. Um, if you want to keep going, I'm going to go ahead and add um, more content into the online class. So I'll expand it so we can get more, more clock hours for this. I'm going to continue to add videos, so there will be probably at least five or six more videos because there's a lot more content for us to get through. So um, some further options for you. I'll extend that, that deadline date. Um, I think it's next week to turn in your content for this class. I'm going to make it to the end of April. So if you need more time to watch the videos in particular that continue uh, continuing on with this, that will be available for you. So, okay. So today we talked about going to the commons. We talked about importing that template from the commons. And then we talked about um, going out to the NASA site and finding some rich content for STEM learning at home that maybe you can push out to your students to, again, giving them that hands-on component so that they aren't sitting in front of a screen all day long. Thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow.